स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया the revision for the finite dimensional calculus is over and now we are at a stage we can, where we can go to the description of the extremization of functionals so let us now slowly start by introducing what is a functional okay so in my first lecture i had briefly said that functional is a function of a function or in term in pure mathematical language a functional is a map from the set of all functions so this is the set of all functions x to a the set of real numbers where this time my vector space is x comma the norm where this particular norm is the function norm which i am going to describe in a minute so this particular vector space is an infinite dimensional an infinite dimensional vector space or i would say function space okay so before i move ahead let me quickly give some examples right uh, a simple very simple example could be j of uh, j of y where y is a function of x is the maximum of y evaluated for all values of x in r right so we can see that the maximum of the function y of x will be a real number so this is a map from the set x to the set r and hence a functional right so so let us now uh, start uh, continue our description let us as further say that s being be a subset of this set of functions so s is a subset of x right so let let us further say then j has j has a local so note that my description of a local minima or local maxima or in general local extrema will follow in a parallel manner to the description of like we did in the description of the finite dimensional calculus so continuing let j has a local maxima let j has a local maxima or a local minima right in s let j has a local maxima or local minima in s and let y be a function in this subset of functions in the subset space s of functions if there exists an epsilon so i am trying to describe the definition of the local minima well sorry the local maxima of this functional j so that can be done if there exists an epsilon positive such that j of y hat minus j of y is less than equal to 0 uh, well respectively for minima is greater than equal to 0 for all y inside this inside this subset s whenever whenever i have that the norm of y hat minus y is less than epsilon right so what i have just said is that suppose y hat is another function in this space of functions s and it is is in an epsilon neighborhood right what i have just described above is the space of all functions in the epsilon neighborhood in the epsilon neighborhood of y right all of these functions they belong to the subset s we call this y hat since y hat is in the epsilon neighborhood of y we call this y hat to be the perturbation 
the perturbation of y right y hat is the perturbation of y okay if if i can write y hat in the following manner where y hat is y plus epsilon eta right so all these definitions are equivalent y hat is in an epsilon neighborhood if y hat is a perturbation of y if y hat can be written in the form of this following relation y hat is equal to y plus epsilon eta where where i describe my functions eta to be the space of perturbation to be coming from the space of perturbation functions with zeros at the end points right so i describe my epsilon neighborhood set i describe my epsilon neighborhood neighborhood set of well of course epsilon neighborhood of within the uh, epsilon neighborhood of the function y so i describe this epsilon neighborhood set as h epsilon to be the set of all functions eta in x such that y plus epsilon eta is is in is in this set s right so this is my set of all perturbation function functions i call this as my perturbation set right okay and i can always i can always make epsilon to be arbitrarily small right arbitrarily small so i can always modulate my perturbation such that it is closer or farther away from the function under consideration right so so now with all this definition this basic definition of a functional let us start describing uh, the result that is the goal of this lecture right so what we have is the following Uh, so i am going to describe the simplest possible variational problem that is the fixed the fixed end point end point variational problem right so my boundary condition is such that the values are fixed at the boundaries so let me say that let let me say that my set, my function space x is the space of all second space of all continuously differentiable functions up to second order inside the interval x0 to x1 right which is the space of all as i said just now the space of all functions from x0 to x1 with continuous second derivative with continuous second derivative so let let further say that j is a functional from this space of functions c2 x0 x1 to r so j be a functional such that j of y j of y is from x0 to x1 f of x comma y comma y prime dx right where where f has continuous second partial derivatives with respect to all the variables involved in the argument of this function with respect to x y y prime right or i say that j has a local j has a local extrema in s where my subset s is the is the set of all functions which are second order continuously differentiable in the interval x0 to x1 such that the end points of those functions are fixed y of x0 is y0 and 
y of x 1 is y 1. Okay. So, this is my set S. So, from now on whenever I describe the set S it belongs it is identical to this particular description of the set. Now, similarly we can describe my perturbation set H. So, I have dropped my subscript epsilon. So, my perturbation set H is the set of all functions eta again second order differentiable such that this time the perturbations vanish at the end point. Okay. So, then we can we can further assume without loss of generality that suppose x has a local maxima at y sorry not x, but j we are talking about the functional j. So, j has a local has a local maxima at well the max the local maxima has to come from the set S. If for all epsilon positive local maxima well uh, what I meant to say here is local maxima at y in S right. If for all epsilon positive I have the following inequality which holds. So, j of y hat minus j of y must be less than equal to 0 for all y hat in S right. So, what I am saying is if I have to draw this all these statements pictorically I am talking about a function which vanishes from well sorry I am talking about a function starting from x naught y naught to x 1 y 1 and which which can be perturbed using our uh, perturbation function eta. So, this is my y hat which is y plus epsilon eta well. So, let me just be a slightly more clearer. So, this is y plus epsilon eta epsilon eta and this particular function is y right. So, suppose we have a local maxima at y then it must be that for all epsilon uh, all y hat in the epsilon neighborhood we must satisfy this inequality right for all y hat such that as I said y hat lies in the epsilon neighborhood of of y right and uh, so 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 that is the definition of the local maxima so now let us expand our function uh, f uh, using taylor series expansion so if we use taylor series let us expand our integrand if we go back to our previous slide i am well not even the previous slide the one before this uh, well we have introduced let us see where is it. well I am talking about this particular definition of the functional with the integrand f right. So, let us expand this integrand f of x comma y comma y prime using the Taylor series let us say we are expanding at f of x comma y hat comma y hat prime where y hat is where y hat is the perturbation of y ok. So, using Taylor series I have that this is equal to f of x comma y comma y prime plus epsilon of eta del f del y plus eta prime del f del y prime plus order epsilon square right. We see that this particular function uh, I have expanded this uh, this integrand up to the, the first order terms and kept the higher order terms in this in this quantity here. Okay. 
So, then once the integrand has been expanded using Taylor series, I can correspondingly define the functional containing this integrand. So, what I have is j at y hat minus j at y will be the integral at f of x comma y hat comma y hat prime minus integral f at x comma y comma y prime right. Well, which means uh, substituting these values and then taking the necessary uh, cancellations, we see that this particular uh, difference is the integral. So, these are along the endpoints x 0 and x 1. This particular integral is integral from x 0 to x 1, uh, x 0 to x 1 epsilon eta del f del y plus eta prime del f del y prime d x right. So, this is the quantity that remains after we do the necessary cancellations right and of course, plus order epsilon square or higher order terms. We see that uh, we, we, we call we, we call this uh, we call this this entire expression as epsilon times the variation of j right. So, the variation of j is this following integration of this following term right. So, what I said is where my variation of j of y is is the following integral. del f del y prime d x. Okay. So, or this is my first variation of j. So, so far we have come to a point where we have described the first variation of the functional j. Notice that if my perturbation is eta and I replace eta by minus eta then minus eta also is in the perturbation set and my variation of the functional at eta comma y satisfies this following equality is negative of the variation at negative eta comma y. We can just plug in the value of negative eta and see that this relation holds right. Okay. So, then then let us now well we have to start we have to start naming some equations with with some numbers let us let us call this expression as 1 and let us call this particular expression that i have this this boxed expression as my expression 2 okay so then I see from 1 that for small well let us go back to that expression. So, we see that from 1 we see that if epsilon is small enough then the sign of this difference whether this sign is positive or negative is completely controlled by this first term because higher order terms will have magnitude which are even smaller than the first term right. So, what I just said is the following we see that for in 1 for small for small quantity epsilon the sign of j of y hat minus j of y is determined j of y hat minus j of y is determined by the sign of delta of j of eta comma y right. Now, well we, we, we want that this particular variation should be sign independent should not depend on epsilon and that is only possible that is only possible when this variation is 0 right for all set of all perturbations right. Otherwise, 
if the variation is sign dependent we will not be able to uh, we will not be able to find the extremal right again a result which follows in parallel to our finite dimensional calculus case right okay so 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 far we have a, we have arrived at a point that to find the extremal we must have the first variation must be equal to zero i call this as the necessary condition for finding the extremal necessary condition for local max or local min i am talking about max at this stage well the similar argument holds for local min as well right and this is so as i said this is an analogous and analogous analog case of grad f is equal to 0 that we did in the finite dimensional calculus case ok. So, then so then what we have is the following from 2 that we from the expression 2 again let us recall the expression 2 is this particular quantity described in terms of these derivatives. Now, what I want to do is I want to, to change this second term using integration by parts. So, that even this term has a particular factor eta and I want to pull out this this perturbation function eta out of this integral or, or this integrand and and show some results which is independent of this perturbation function eta ok. So, then so from 2 what we have let us look at this second term as I just said integral from x 0 to x 1 eta prime of del f del y prime d x right. If we use integration by parts by saying that let us say this is my first function this is my second function we use integration by parts to arrive at the fact that this is eta times del f del y prime from x 0 to x 1 minus integral from x 0 to x 1 eta d d x of del y del y prime d x right. Now, we also know that the perturbation functions eta are such that they vanish at the boundary. So, which means that this first term is going to be 0, it vanishes at the boundary and we arrive that this particular quantity is the negative of this quantity. So, which means, which means let me call this as 2 prime. So, from, from 2 and 2 prime I arrive at the fact that my first variation of the functional delta j of eta comma y is integral from x 0 to x 1 times eta of del f del y minus d d x of del f del y prime d x right. So, we have using integration by parts we have now been able to come to a point where my integrand has a common factor of eta and we know that for the extremal this first variation must be 0 right. So, let me call this result as 3. Now, intuitively all the students can see that uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to figure out a condition for the the existence of the extremal value y right and we have found an integral condition and from here what we will show that since this holds for all for any arbitrary eta this must be true for the case when only when this particular integrand inside this bracket is 0 right. So, the integral being 0 leads to the fact that this quantity inside this bracket must be equal to 0 and that is our goal right. So, as I just said that the next thing that we are trying to show is let me call this quantity uh, by 
E, right. Uh, so, what I said is I define my I define my E from x 0 to x 1, E from x 0 to x 1 to R by E is equal to del f del y minus del del x del f del y prime right. So, this is the quantity I describe by E. So, E is the function as follows. So, then my 3 I can I can write 3 in a very shorthand notation my 3 is the inner product where the inner product is defined with with respect to this integral it is the inner product of eta with respect to E and for extremal. So, as I just said this is the inner product of eta with respect to E is defined with respect to this integral right and for extremal this must be equal to 0 for extremal ok. Ok, so then let us continue. So, what now I am going to show from this point onwards that this integral being 0 will lead to the fact that E must be equal to 0 right. So, for that I need to show two small results. So, the idea before I move on further let me just state the basic idea here. To show that this function E is equal to 0 we will show by contradiction. We will show assume that let us say E is non-zero although the integral is 0 and we will arrive at a particular contradiction namely we will we will figure out an eta which is a perturbation function which is non-zero and that perturbation leads to a contradiction. So, the goal is to find a perturbation particular perturbation eta which leads to our uh, the, the proving of the result via contradiction ok. 